I hear you got a problem. You're telling me you're failing YouTube University? I hope you're not feeling failed by me. Failed by Mel, not me. But I have heard that some of my tips, tricks, and techniques aren't working. And well, since it's the sixth year anniversary of creating content on the channel, What's good, everybody? What's good, everybody? What's good, everybody? As Mel, your main girl, I thought we could celebrate this milestone with some self-deprecating and do a little bit of a roundup roast of my techniques and why they're not working. We're going to cover five styling tips along with five troubleshooting tricks. And in true Mains by Mel fashion, I am going to demonstrate this with a side-by-side -side comparison. Honestly, I don't know what style I like better. If you happen to be new to the channel, you are so welcome. You are about to get five of my best pro tips with the tricks that you need for your hair type. That's right, all curl textures are always welcome here. So without further ado, let's get styling. All right, so each tip is a different step in the routine. So we are going to just let these hairs down to start styling. Now they have been drying. I'm going to use my spray bottle that's handy and start with our first issue. When I compile all of the concerns that I get from this community, most of the problems are relating to volume. And coming from someone who is big on advocating for brush styling, I hate to admit that this could be killing your volume. You're getting killer definition, but you're not getting the volume that you're looking for. So let's roast my ribbon curl technique. Some of you have been trying my ribbon curl technique and finding, finding that it falls flat. You're getting killer definition, but not the volume that you seek. So here's what's happening. And excuse me, I'm just gonna do a little bit of quick prepping. Remember that whenever you apply your products, your hair should be evenly wet throughout. I'm gonna apply some leave-in conditioner. Same thing on both sides. The bangs, I'm gonna leave for last. Now, while I'm holding it, first we'll talk about brushes and how your brush could be making a difference. What's happening with the ribbon curls technique is a lot of smoothing. Put it this way, every time you take a brush through your strands, you are basically distributing your products all throughout them and you're really laying down that frizz. Now frizz is what can bring a lot of volume. And if you already have hair that's naturally very silky, then using a brush that's going to create a lot of tension and really smooth out the strands, for example, the Bounce Curl brush literally has little boar, vegan boar bristles that really smooth out your hair's cuticle as well as smooth out any frizz, making your hair even silkier and even more resistant to being big, really. Really. So if you're feeling like your hair is almost too smooth and silky, I would say skip it. I'm also gonna apply just a little bit of a styling cream and then more to come later on. We'll talk about foams and gels, but any of the products that I am using in my hair will be linked in the description box below. No, in my room. Anyways, you know where to find them. Now here's the issue with the ribbon curls technique. When you're using a brush, you're gonna be doing a lot of smoothing, straightening almost, it seems. And if one, your hair is not at a certain level of health, then this ribbon curl styling will very much seem like it's straightening. Or if your hair type is naturally super silky, then by brush styling, you are removing any possibility of you achieving some volume in your hair. Volume either comes naturally if you have a really high density and or a highly tight texture of hair, or you can get volume if there is enough separation in the curls, or three, you need to embrace some of the frizzies. Hair that is a little bit more frizzy, which is also correlated to dryness, so hair that isn't as moisturized and is a little bit more unruly will have the volume that maybe you seek. And so if that's the case, then skip the brush styling. Brush styling doesn't have to be for everybody. You could always just style your hair with your fingers, always up, up, and away off of your scalp. This is going to be a little bit more messy, unruly, it's disorganized, but will definitely bring out more of that natural riz, that natural frizz. It might look something like this. Or if you still want the smoothing, 
I would advise you take smaller sections. When we take a really big section of our hair and we clump it all together, then we're only gonna have so many curl clumps. And what happens when we have a bigger brush, like a paddle brush, like so, this one is the Tangle Teaser, by the way. This is the Denman brush, and this is the Bounce Curl brush. If we take a large section with a large brush, you're going to get these really big curl clumps, which are going to gather all the hair in one little chunk, as opposed to giving you that separation that you're looking for. But by taking very small sections, you will see that I can still get some good volume here. Now, while I'm here, let me tell you that my hair is not soaking wet. 99.9% .9 of the time, I am team damp style. And that just isn't very moist of me. Or it is moist, because moist is kind of, moist is just a negative word. I believe that is the general consensus on it. Of course, not when it comes to curls, but on the topic of moistness, let's talk about wet versus damp styling. This relates a lot to when we are brush styling because if you have a much more looser, softer wave pattern and you're trying to style like this with a very smoothing brush on hair that is damp, your hair is going to be too dry to curl up well. As a general rule, when the hair is super soaking wet, you're going to get the most amount of clumping. When the hair is more on the damp, dry side, that's when you're going to see more separation, volume, and perhaps more frizz. And the truth is, if you have been styling your hair more damp as opposed to wet, you might also be experiencing more frizz. So instead of damp styling, which I'm just gonna finish up really quickly, and when I say damp, I don't mean some areas are dry. I, I still want the strand to be evenly wet from root to tip. I still wanna hear a little squish. I might slightly spray it. But in no way would I describe my hair as sopping wet. There are no drips. It's just wet enough so the brush can slip. Now as a fine haired curly, this really works for me. The damp hair styling paired with the brush for smoothing, but I also love the volume. So I take the small sections. This is what I am currently left with. On the other side of my head, we're gonna switch it up a bit. We are gonna go with really, really wet styling because if you have more coarse hair, and or highly textured hair, your hair is better to style soaking wet. And even my sister, who has a similar curl pattern to me, has a very different texture. And when I say texture, I refer to the thickness of your hair strand. Coarser hair has a thicker hair strand, and it more often needs a lot more water when styling. So I actually advise, if you have coarser hair, to actually apply your stylers in the shower. So you can see now that the hair is really, really wet and actually dripping, instead of drip drying or even towel drying, we're gonna apply our stylers while the hair is sopping. Coarse textured hair will expand a lot while it is drying, and so you'll have a better chance at controlling the curl with this sopping wet styling. The other thing that can happen when you style on soaking wet hair is you can allow for more shrinkage. Because you are styling the hair and setting it while it is sopping wet, you can set yourself up for a lot more shrinkage. This goes for both wavy hair, because if you style with it damp, again, like I mentioned, you might be brushing out the curl too much and the hair might not be wet enough to retract back. And even with tight textured coily hair, if you brush style on soaking wet hair or even do a twist out on soaking wet hair, when the hair dries, it's really going to retract as opposed to if you styled that damp hair or even going back to the twist out example, if you blow dry the hair and then do a twist out on dry hair, you'll retain a lot of length that way. So styling super wet can also encourage shrinkage if you don't weigh the hair down with a ton of product, which we need to talk about next. And so let's roast, I mean, talk about my collaboration with Verb and the Curl Foaming Gel. This is one of my favorite products to use. Of course, I'm a little bit biased, but it's a gel that foams. So it's like the 
perfect in between a gel and a foam. But for some, a gel on its own might be much better at giving you holes versus actually reaching for more of a mousse gel, not a foam gel. You know, this is a this is a foam gel. It's very lightweight, more water-based. This is a mousse gel, which is better for texturizing and adding a little more grit and hold to the hair. While this was tested on all textures and it is my baby, this is a lightweight and also very smoothing formula that might not work for everybody. I'm gonna apply it on my side here. And I actually do usually brush this through, but I'm just going to apply it over top. One of my favorite ways to use gel is by smoothing it over top of curls that have already been defined to kind of give it like an outer shell of protection and hold. And I do find that that can bring you more hold. Sometimes when you brush the product all the way through, I think all of the spreading through the wet hair also just leads to dilution. So it might not give you as much hold that way, but smoothing and then scrunching on top can help to lay down your flyaways. And like I said, give you that outer shell. And this works with every gel, okay? I'm not just, not just this. Although I do wanna just quickly add again, because this is my birthday. And this was the biggest product launch of our whole YouTube career thus far. I just want to give a quick thank you to everyone that has supported this and also sold it out during the Sephora sale that's going on right now. It, honestly, I was just part of the development and the launch of this product, so I don't benefit from you still using it, but I do love that so many of you share with me your love for this product because it is my baby. It did mean a lot to me and it hurts when some of you say that this doesn't work for your styling. And so that I just say, try it on your more damp hair as opposed to soaking wet, cause you will get more hold or you could just use a stronger hold gel. So that's what I'm now going to do on this side. This actually happens to be, I didn't plan it, but I realized it just now. All the products I'm applying here are my sister's routine who does have coarse hair and we shared her routine as well as mine in our last video. So you can see that as well. I'm gonna take some of this Curlsmith gel, souffle, excuse me, this jelly. And this is the type of gel you can apply on sopping wet hair. Because it does have a stronger hold, you'll still get a good cast with this. So I'm going to distribute it I know I'm gonna look crazy at the end of this video. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Let us define no brush to style. This is very much the rake and squeeze, rake and shake, very much kind of wee dad method here. The other thing about styling soaking wet hair is you can really get in the roots a little bit easier for more root definition. I mean, I think you can already see this side is lacking volume, especially on someone like me, but for coarser hair textures, it's the sopping wet, wet styling paired with a stronghold gel that is really giving me this curl defining all without brush styling. Now I'm just gonna do an additional step because my hair can get easily weighed down. If that sounds like you, then I do advise that you take a microfiber towel just to help absorb any of that excess product and water that is in your hair now. And this is going to help with drying. Let me style my bangs really quickly actually. Look how dry these are. And just for fun shites and giggles, I'm gonna combine the techniques and style on hair that is dripping with my curl foaming gel, but brushing it through. Cause that's one of my favorite ways to use this. Cause it's one of the only gels that I actually can easily brush through the hair. And why not for a little extra texture, I'm gonna take the smallest amount and scrunch that in. With the mousse gel, I like to scrunch on top. The foaming gel, I do prefer to brush through. And the regular gel, I mean, you could really choose if you really want to distribute it through for true, complete frizz control all throughout the strand. And to dilute it a bit, I would brush it through. Or for that hard outer shell and curl control, I would just place this on top. Pick your poison. Now I'm ready to start drying. And this segment is for anyone that says the hover diffuse doesn't work for yous. 
Here's where I'm going to agree with you, okay? My issue when I first came out with the Hover Diffuse video was that I, I made the video like this was the be all end all way to dry your hair because the context was to avoid hair from getting frizzier, which is another main concern. The point of the Hover Diffuse is to simulate air drying because at the time absolutely no one knew how to properly diffuse curly hair everyone was scrunching it and touching it and were scared and so they stopped diffusing and were only strictly air drying but what we have also learned especially through watching my channel many of you have come to terms that air drying is worse for your hair than blow drying and the hover diffuse is the healthiest way to dry your hair and of course will dry your hair much faster than if you are air drying but this is not the fastest way to dry your hair and it is not going to actually give you the maximum volume that you might be looking for i've heard some people say that their hair was flat with the hover diffuse and it's because you're only hover diffusing whereas the hover diffuse is a technique to do within the whole routine so let me start drying. The hover diffuse is the first technique to do. This is to focus on drying a little bit of the roots as well as setting the cast in the hair. And you can do this for as little as two to five minutes. You don't have to do this until the hair is completely dry, especially if you want to encourage some shrinkage and some extra bounce in the hair. When I do start scrunching, I do turn down the heat just because I'm getting closer to my scalp and the air is more directly on the curls, you do wanna be a little bit more gentle with them. While the Hover Diffuse was initially what I preached, this is no longer what I entirely practice. On my short hair, especially when I wanna encourage more volume, I definitely have been doing more scrunching and I am loving this side of my styling. You can see a big difference in the side that we styled soaking wet and did a lot more scrunching with diffusing. There was a lot more shrinkage. It's a lot more shrunken. It looks shorter than this side where the damp styling and the hover diffuse only resulted in a lot more length on me. Am I in my asymmetrical bob era? Hmm. Now let's get finishing. The final step of our hair routine as well as step in this video is going to focus on finishing. I put a lot of emphasis on this phase of your styling because I mean, otherwise a style is incomplete. When you take a look at this hair as it is, on both sides actually, the hair is quite crispy, especially over here, very crispy. And as someone with high porosity hair that often lives in high humidity, I am a big fan of sealing and finishing the style with a hair oil. But that doesn't work for everybody. There are many of you that have complained about how hair oils can make your hair just fall flat, maybe weigh it down, maybe just take out too much of your hold and therefore lose your curl that way, or it just makes your hair too silky. You notice how there's a bit of a trend? Like if it's too silky, it doesn't cooperate with you. The texture needs some texture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply a hair oil as I usually do, but I'm gonna do it on this side because this side is super crunchy and I would personally scrunch this out just to help soften it and also reveal some more of the volume because as you can see because of the wet styling the curls are a lot more clumped together as opposed to my damp styling skinny sections with the brush so i'm going to take a little bit of hair oil and i'm going to smooth out a lot of that crunch which is going to make the hair softer a hair oil is going to come in handy most if you are someone that tends to have that more high porosity, naturally very frizzy and dry hair that doesn't hold on to its moisture. This is hair that may also lack luster. It doesn't have a lot of natural shine. You are really going to benefit from using a hair oil, especially when you go outside. And if you need some of that extra hold, add some hold back on top and the hairspray won't be that that crunchy because you have that hair oil underneath, which is also gonna keep the hair 
nice and moisturized and, and prevent the hairspray from being too drying. And then you got the best of both worlds. Okay, now truth be told, you can also do that without an oil. Now I will advise that you proceed with caution. If your hands are dry, then you might create a little bit of frizz when you do this. But realistically, a lot of our curly hair products have oils in them. And so you might not need to add any extra oil right now to finish your hair. You might be able to just gently scrunch out that cast to help reveal a little bit more of your volume. And instead of softening, again, if you wanted to embrace more texture, then instead of finishing with a hair oil, that's not the be all end all product to finish with, you can also finish with a texture spray or hairspray. So that's what I'm gonna do over here. I'm just kind of scrunch and zhuzh that in. I've got the one side with damp hair brush styling that is a lot softer, but also drier. It has more texture. It's softer looking. It's got great volume, as well as more length, thanks to hover diffusing. And then this side has a lot more control because of that soaking wet styling, as well as using that harder hold gel and really raking it through my hair and it's very scrunched up because I diffuse by scrunching on my soaking wet hair. This obviously gave me a very different result that I am going to have to deal with tomorrow because and literally even though I applied the oil, there is still a lot of stronghold on this side. Like these curls are definitely going to last me for days and you can just see that because they are more clumped, they look more hydrated, they're more shiny. This hair won't really give me as much longevity necessarily. I'm definitely gonna wanna apply a hair oil on this hair tomorrow. But as for today and this week's video, I believe we are complete. Let me know. Have you learned something? I know that there was a lot of topics that I covered in this video, and so I wanna make a blog post. You'll be able to see that on my website where you will see in written format how I break down these techniques as well as their troubleshooting in case you learn better that way. And also while you are on my website, if you haven't signed up for my newsletter, you should do that because I only send one email a week and then you are automatically entered into a monthly giveaway when you give away your email to me. I promise we're not spammy. But on that note, I should have, I had never got dressed. Should I put my cute shirt on? It sounds like a lot of work right now. I'm up literally, I'm gonna be going to bed. Um, maybe I'll just keep on the robe. Okay, if you love the robe too, because I saw comments in the last video, this is also linked below. But that's all I was gonna say, really. I think I was going to add that um, if you ever have questions about your hair, I am so happy to help. Sometimes one of your questions sparks a whole video idea within me. And so if you have any questions or, or you have other techniques that you need troubleshooting, do leave them in the comments. I look forward to seeing you there and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. This has been your main girl Mel and I am out. Peace. Okay, arrow. Yes, yes. All I do is come on this app every texture Thursday. Used to be Tuesday. And I just try to stare just some fucking shit about my hair. Like, it's just, it's not even, it's not that serious. So glad we all got over the curly girl method. We follow the mellow methods now. Yes, 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 yes. My curlies. <laughs> you are my precious. I am so happy to have you here. Hair. <sighs> oh, I was doing the intro again. Now, if you made it this far into the bloopers, you are an absolute real one. I see you and I thank you so much for watching and supporting this channel for six years, officially. Like we are, I believe, in the OG category. And this is not an honor that we take lightly. We love and always try giving back to our community. And so of course, we're gonna do a big giveaway on this video for this month. All you have to do is make sure you are subscribed to our newsletter. And in your comment that you leave under this video, make sure that you include your first name with your first initial of your last name. That way, whoever the winner under this video is, we will be able to contact you from the email list. If none of that made sense, 
the details will be in the description box. But yeah, thank you so much for celebrating. Also last year's celebration video was extremely fire. So if you missed that, I'm gonna put that in the description box below as well. And um, I'm just gonna try not to get emotional. I just feel really grateful, honestly. I don't, I don't feel sad. I feel really proud. Oh, well, that's gonna make me fucking cry. But I, um, you know, we're still doing the damn thing. And I still feel like we're just getting started. So stay tuned and I will see you in the next one. Mwah! Oh, don't look at my pits. I'm due for a wax. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not wearing pants. Thank you. Tomorrow I'm sleeping in. Literally me when I sit down to film, I'm like, it's five o'clock somewhere. It's a more reasonable time to start filming somewhere. Not here. And that's it. Ooh, 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 ooh. Who even watches this clown? I don't, I don't know why you stick around. Yeah, I do. I don't, but I do, but I do also question it all the time. I wonder why. Tell them that it's human nature, why, why? Have I really successfully filmed if I haven't broken out into song? <laughs> I can't help it, I can't help it, I can't help it, I can't help it. Should I do the intro one more time? I think the first one was probably... <laughs> the first one was probably good.